you find people will proffer different reasons for it. And you, you've touched on both. So you'll have those who say the high immigration a la ro crumbling Roman empire leads to end of the state and uh, a total change in the way the state is run, the people who constitute it. And then there are some who dismiss that and say, well, that's not the whole story. Um, so maybe not dismiss it, but they would add to it and say, it's actually, if you look at the Roman empire, for example, there was a huge level of debt. There was, uh, there was lots of stuff that w was being paid for with money that didn't exist. And in the end, they were unable to, to govern. And yet what we have here really is a, a combination of those things. We've got an eye-watering national debt, which is now 100% of GDP and looks like it's going to uh, triple uh, by the 2070, according to forecasts recently. Then you've got all of the numbers of people coming in that you've mentioned, and there is data showing that not many of those are actually contributing and many end up being net takers. So then you continue adding to the debt and that becomes self-defeating. And then this point of not having a coherent state, I think we are already seeing it insofar as besides having seen identity politics be rolled out initially for ethnic minorities in, in this idea of raising them up is what that's done. And you can see it amongst the, the, the 20 odd year olds who are referring to themselves as Anglo Zoomers, that there is now a sense of cultural loss, identity loss amongst people who are um, white British, well, that's English, Scottish, Irish, Welsh, Northern Irish, Welsh, and they are starting to push back. They're trying to reclaim their identity. And so I suppose I saw it initially in the corporate world where it was the promotion of multicultural networks, where in the end, lots of people just started hiding behind these networks in order to advance their own interests in the organization. And you could see it balkanizing. You could see the firms balkanizing. And now it's happening on a, a national scale because obviously that policy of multiculturalism is is rolled out. So we've got a, we've got a pretty, it, it's, it's all of these problems coming together that makes it almost impossible for any government unwilling to challenge any of them to, um, to, to actually come up with a solution for the country. Everything else, if you talk about the other policies seem to fade into insignificance, if you're not going to deal with either balkanization, rising debt levels caused by your promotion of that balkanization through bringing more people in. And then you've got a whole bunch of people who are now feeling totally disenfranchised. Uh, I, I don't know what you've noticed with the profile of people that get brought towards the SDP or the challenger parties. Do, do you sense that people are driven by the, the cultural loss angle or is there other stuff to it? Oh, no, it's an important part of uh, the picture, I think you paint, uh, you paint the picture pretty, pretty accurately. I, I think, um, one of the things that we say, uh, in, in the part in the SDP is that, um, all, you know, all of our economic problems, for instance, or environmental problems have cultural roots and virtually everything has cultural roots. And so the one, the, the things that you mentioned just there, you know, I think a lot of our difficulties are caused by a ruling class that as, as has fallen, if it ever did love the country, it's fallen out of love with it. And, you know, it has a degree of sort of self-hatred. Um, the, the, these, these themes, um, these things have been, uh, inside progressive politics, liberal politics for generations. I mean, it literally goes all the way back probably to the eight, late 1800s. It was certainly present. Uh, in the Bloomsbury group in the 1930s, although some, you know, some of that was a reaction against a, a horrific first world war, but the, but, but everything that Orwell said about the British ruling class in, in the late thirties and early forties is true now, just with, with greater intensity. So, um, yes, the, de the denigration of your history, the bringing up of a generation in shame and, uh, general, general, you know, self-hatred. Uh, is 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 very very problematic because the downside, the sort of da downstream of that self hatred, uh, is uh, a lack of self assertion, and what you see on say immigration or border control is just a lack of self assertion. It's just a, an elite that cannot possibly assert its interests. And I jokingly say a lot that you know what would Lee Kuan Yew do? To most problems, I would say you know what would Lee Kuan Yew do? The great Singaporean leader. Well. 
Lee Kuan Yew would not have had people wandering into the country. It just it couldn't happen. It, it, you'd have to stop that. He'd see that you'd have to stop that. And our ruling class can't see it, so they're really quite incompetent. Um, so, yeah, I, I think all of these things are interlinked. But what you're... Uh, so the question for us is, as a political party, can we, can we somehow, even if it's a last-ditch thing, can we somehow claim and convene and reinvigorate a type of civic nationalism which brings all of our citizens together under uh, the, the umbrella of being British and get some sort of unity, get some sort of, can we find a new us, in other words? Can we, can we possibly do that? And that's what we are trying to do. Uh, if, we, if we can't succeed, and I think the train has to leave about now, you have to get on that train, if you can't get on that train, if we don't succeed in creating, fostering, bringing, convening a sense of civic nationalism, then you're, you're just headed to what John Gray says, refers to as a sort of low intensity civil war among groups, balkanization and division and enmity. And I think that's, you know, so that's one of the reasons why I think there's a lot at stake here to try and bring people together. Um, and you, you're quite right. I mean, you can't, the, the British cities have changed demographically to such a great extent. You'd have to be literally blockheaded not to, the, the, you know, to see from a white British point of view that the, the change might be seen as loss. You know, I think David Goodhart talks about this quite a lot in his writing. You know, not everyone sees rapid, massive change to your society as 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 progress. Some people see it as a loss, or you know, something you might you might miss the old the old situation. And, um, so, but we, you know, the challenge for parties now is to try and bring people together if they can be brought together. And there's, there's too much division, too much racialization of everything. Um, but you, you know, I, one of the reasons we've argued for a cessation in mass migration is to try and look for the conditions that might enable us to find a new us, to find a way that we can say, you know, what, who, the people, the people living in these islands, uh, if you're, li if you're living here legally, you're British, that's it. So we, we, we have to try and find a way of, of, of pulling people together, but it wouldn't, it couldn't be helpful in trying to build, rebuild solidarity or get social cohesion, uh, mm. to improve it. It couldn't be helpful to have, to continue on this slightly balmy uh, experiment in mass cultural change. You just can't, it's not helpful at all. Because if you look at it, if you look, open your eyes and look at it, it, it does create division, uh, and tension. And so I think a period of time, we, we originally actually started talking about a mass immigration pause, yeah. uh, because partly because, because it has precedent, you know, in the United States from 1920 to 1970, there's a, a mass immigration pause and it worked rather well. But I, I've, I've, I, of late, I've stopped using the word pause because I think what you just need is a cessation. Because you don't know a, a pause implies that you, you know, you, you've had this mass, mass immigration experiment, and you're turning off the taps for a while, and looking. You intend to turn the taps back on. Well, I'm saying, well, maybe you don't turn the taps back on at all, and we just get get a route to finding ourselves, and you try and unite, trying to unite the people that are here. That would be a, a an important political aim in itself. But, um, so we'll see where we go with that. And of course, like, like in so many other areas, uh, John, we, we, the public are with us on this. You know, if you look at data, close to 70% of the British public want that mass immigration stopped. So we'll see where we go. It's the, it's the ruling class that, uh, are attached.